It is a crime to all VCT fans that Trent is not playing in Tier 1 this year. He decided to stick with the guard and they are going to be competing in challenges trying to earn a Tier 1 spot next year. But it's just a shame because he's so good. And we're going to look at what makes him so good in this match. We're looking at the final three rounds of overtime, 28, 29, and 30 versus Sentinels. And we're going to break down what the guard do and how Trent sort of just goes, I've had enough, we're winning this game. First thing to note is that Sentinels ironically aren't running a Sentinel, which means that this wall here from Trent, this Viper wall, which goes across a main and across into heaven, get so much value because the sentinels have to dedicate a player to this at all times sometimes even two otherwise it's a massive lurking threat and that allows the guard to really get extra pressure mid and so you can see sentinels they are going to kind of leave it open a little bit sassy is going to be playing in heaven solo on a and sentinels are going to get this really nice aggressive early push into mid they get zekin through this wall right up against these boxes and they also have def and tens playing this sort of crossfire and baiting for zekin here tens and def might get one but really if they get one that's a bonus because zekin's in a really great position here to get heaps you see the util comes out zekin doesn't shoot it they both bait for him tens get flashed they get two tens gets one flashed and then they trade out def and sentinels go up four to three in this round but then look at this lurk timing from trent he gets all the way through he checks heaven it's so much easier to get through with these changes here on split and he just walks and walks and walks walks under heaven so that by the time they're peeking out they don't see him and they're unaware of this timing deaf and sassy and trent hits both of them i mean they're both first they're both facing back against him um, I don't think this was intentional, but this is actually a really nice sort of smoke idea, being able to smoke off all of rafters. Trent is just so nice with those spray transfers. You see, he gets the molly out to stop the screens push so he can get the plant down. And then he gets the ultimate out. I really love this ultimate, the Viper's Pit. The guard used this and it allows you just to play in elbow really, really safely. If you've got two players, you can't have someone sneak through behind you and you're able to play this really deep position through elbow. Zekin does end up actually getting the kill on him, but because he's so low, because he's walked through the Viper ultimate, Trent actually gets his third with the Molly. Tex with the late flank through mid, which is, again, such an important sort of area of split. He's able to clean up that round and get the final kill. Now we come into round 29 and the guard are back on defense. And you can see Tex is going to be holding this angle, but they've got the operator onto 10s, do Sentinels. And you see, they've got this orb for him to cross. He just takes a moment before he crosses just to see if anyone's going to spam it. He doesn't want to die to a random smoke spam uh, and get headshot. So he waits for that and then gets himself into this nice, again, a nice new angle on split. Hits this shot onto Jonah. They are on land. So these op shots just feel really, really crisp. And he's waiting for someone else to peek. They get the prowler out. That gets text found out on ramp and they decide to go towards B. Pancarta gets found by net, little jump spot, gets tagged a little bit, but they are going to hit B here. They're just legging it. Uh, they get the operator onto def here so that tens can enter with the rifle. And then they're going to get set up and come play for B. And I want you guys to watch Trent's positioning and the angles that he plays here. So net comes through. S tries to stall him out as best as he can. He gets done by the smoke spam. And Trent gets himself into hell. So he's run all the way here uh, from heaven and gets himself into this angle. Now, this angle used to be sort of cut off here. You wouldn't be able to see. You'd have to be further back. But now you can sort of get this deeper backwards angle. This is meant to sort of open this up and make this easier to clear for the attackers. But the fact that you can get so deep and watch this angle so tightly now... I think it could actually be an advantage for the defenders. Now, Trent goes absolutely crazy here. Valen steals this first kill in on him just with the quicker tr trigger discipline. Great molly to stop anyone pushing out through the smoke. Again, great awareness to flick to the right and hit that nice shot on Zekin. And then he knows that at least one more is stuck in heaven. And he's in a 1v2 now with that shot onto Tex. He's worried about that. But then look at this quick rat. He keeps moving so quickly. And then shoots both of them. Another nice spray transfer from Trent. He's so good with them. 
This round is quintessentially what makes Trent so good. So he uses Util to isolate the fight. He's aware of this other player, so he effectively flicks onto this other player, takes this other fight, and then moves. And then moves. So they're still only seeing Def. And he just keeps moving. And he wants to take this fight against Def. He knows that the time is running down. Look, he's got 20 seconds. So Def can't just hold this angle forever. They have to keep moving into sight. And so Trent, he keeps moving. And he just catches them off guard. They still think he's there. It's funny how often players that you're against will assume that you are still in the position that they last saw you or close to it. Keep moving, guys. That's what Trent is teaching you here. Just keep moving. The two really nice kills in that last round for 10s as well. But look at this idea from the guard. So this is really, really nice. Again, they abuse this Viper wall, knowing that the Sentinels don't have something that can just watch all of what it's trying to cover. And Trent just gets into this deep position, into the little pocket in A main, and he's just going to sit there. That's all he needs to do. He just needs to control this space and, and he gets himself into an off angle to help with that. Sentinels, they don't want what happened two rounds ago to happen again. So they've got two players watching this at all times and Def is in the area too, which leaves mid wide open. This is what the guard wants. This is what they were trying to set up in that previous round. It means that there's gonna be a hole. If Sentinels dedicate to mid, like they did last round, they get Trent deep in A. And if they commit to A, then they go mid. And if they commit to B, they don't actually care. They've just got a turret watching this push out. So you can see four players here in mid for the guard. And they're able to just walk up here for free. They use the trailblazer that gets all the way into B heaven. And they see that there's no one B heaven. Net starts to go B heaven. And then Valen must have called him off very, very wisely. The alarm bot can see that there's no one in this smoke. So Net gets himself into this smoke. They've created the pressure into B. They've drawn Def all the way over to B and then they get net into this deep position in ropes. There's no one watching this for Sentinels. There's no Sentinel utility to cover this. So Tens is now completely exposed. If net just walked through here, he could definitely shoot Tens. But he could also just get shot. Maybe Sassy's like playing here and he's watching Tens' back and Tens is, you know, watching this for Sassy. If Tens like came and held this angle here, and Sassy played here. Sassy could watch Tens' back and Tens could watch anyone crossing through. He'd be able to see the cross for Trent. So this would have been a better setup for Sentinels. It would have been a little bit less risky for them. But what they're trying to do here, they want to clear out Trent. And the guard, they're coming through sewers for this A main push with this late lurk here from net, creating all of this pressure. And you can see how much pressure it sort of creates. They're going to get the Prowler here out to find Trent. And he's just going to chill there. He gets, while blinded, nearsighted by the way, gets this smoke orb up covering the angle. So Tens can't hold anything. And you can see Net creating that pressure. Tens is so worried about ropes. There's no one here to watch it for him. And Def doesn't actually come through. He quickly peeks this, but doesn't come give the support to Tens. He actually goes to sight. You know, because there's this ropes player here and because this smokes here, Tens has to come play this shorty angle. He pops his dash, but they drop the smoke on him and double peek it, triple peek it even really. And Def has to run to sight. And they come through heaven. Net gets this late push in through ropes. Valen hits that shot on Sassy. And Valen just goes crazy in this round. And this setup from the guard is really, really nice. There's a couple of small improvements that I would make. I would te get Tex rather than tucked in this corner. I would get him holding this jiggle spot and holding the deeper angle. And I would actually have Jonah facing this wall so that you can't see his gun barrel sticking out of here. Death actually abuses that and is able to isolate this cross. So this cross breaks down. Valen also should come play here. We have heaven control. Net and Trent are playing this cross here. And so anyone coming through here is going to die. And Trent is also able to see anyone from A main. This is the weakest spot for them. But because they've had net mid for so long, they know that it's like the only path that they could really take is a very late push all the way through spawn. They had the turret here for some time as well. So they're happy to sort of be exposed here. They don't think someone's here. They have reasonable intel to say that no one's flanking. So Valen would be able to come play his back here. Even incredible timing if... Sentinels push one through 
exactly as someone pushed here and Trent was a and Trent like stopped watching Jonah and Valen would be exposed to this a main push uh, but potentially, you know, you have Valen watching this as well, and then he can flick and turn and be a third person for this screens fight, which is so often where people come. If you had like this cross plus this angle, like you're never getting out of that. It's a really nice setup. In general though, they clear out this little pocket. You're forced to clear out that little pocket now and then see Def just jiggles that. Doesn't get shot by Tex because he's not on a wide enough angle. And they do get this deep push into elbow. They take out Tex and see Valen gets himself now into this position where he can regroup with net. And then comes down. They double swing this. They force Def off the spike. And Valen hits both of those shots. Great round from the guard. Really nice setup. The way that they work that map in that final round is really, really nice. Exposing the, the holes in Sentinel's comp. With no Sentinel, they're able to just poke up. Put, get these deep positions, get these flank threats, and they have the patience to wait for the fruits of their labor. You can see a few of those new angles on split coming into play as well, just making it a little bit easier for the attackers. It was 6-6 on both half for these teams on this map, which could be a good indicator. I think the changes will have that slight sort of impact towards the attackers, especially the new angles on A site. Makes things like pushing out of A main, a little bit easier pushing into heaven a little bit easier and then also being able to play that post plant position below rafters is really really nice too